First of all, you can use color to guide the attention. If a big area of your artwork has a certain color, then an area that has a different color, a different hue, will attract the attention of the viewer. So in this case, this green little fellow is attracting the attention. So we are actually working with contrast here. There is a contrast, a difference between the focal point and the rest of the image. And there are different ways to apply that contrast to establish that difference between the focal point and the rest. So here we have color. And here's an example of an artwork in which this technique is applied. In this painting by William Merritt Chase, you can see that he mainly used blues, very cool tones. But over here in this section, he used bright red. And since the color is so different, it's also a lot warmer than the rest of the image. It is naturally drawing the attention. And once you have looked at this area because your eyes got drawn to it, you will naturally get drawn to this other area, which is yellow. So this is like the secondary focal point. It is not as bright. It is not as big of a difference with the blue as this red area, but still it's asking for your attention. Another way to establish this attraction is by playing around with the saturation of your focal point. Now let's say everything is a bit desaturated. Colors are a bit muted, but in your focal point, everything is a lot more saturated. Naturally, the eyes will get drawn to this character. And here's an example of an artwork which makes use of that. In this image, there is a big contrast between all those muted colors and, well, pretty much the entire painting. And then your eyes naturally get drawn to this little beach ball. It has very saturated colors. Here you can see the colors of the beach ball compared to some colors that I've picked from the rest of the painting. Since this guy is so big and he's pretty dark, contrasting, with the background, your eyes will get drawn to this character and then immediately your eyes will go to this little beach ball. Then you'll wonder why is this, this creature holding this beach ball? What's going on? And then your eye will get drawn to this character over here with his little dog. So here the artist really did a great job of guiding the eye of the viewer. If the colors of this ball were muted as well, this artwork would be way less readable. It would take some time before you would notice this ball in the hand of the creature. And the story of this book would be less clear. Another way to create the contrast is by using value. Now value means how dark or light an area is. So for instance, if all of these characters are quite dark and this focal point character is very light in value, then he will naturally draw the attention. It's almost as if he's in the spotlight. Here's a little example. You can see how your eyes naturally get drawn to the light area. So this area is light in value and the rest is very dark in value. And you can also see how this painter has made use of color over here with the red little cloth, or perhaps it's something like a backpack that attracts the eye even more. Also colors are a bit more saturated in this area compared to the other areas. So this painter used multiple techniques including the rule of thirds actually, but we'll get to that later. Here's another great example of how to use value to attract the attention of your viewer. In this image by Bobby Chu, everything is pretty dark. And right over here, we have this focal point, this little creature that is holding this light box, which is way lighter in value. If everything would be pretty much the same in value, then again, this story would be way harder to read. Your eyes might not get attracted to the light box that easily. You can also make use of contrast in shapes. Right here in this image, all of the characters have the same color, the same saturation, the same value but the shape of this character is different. It makes him stand out. There's a contrast here. The eye of the viewer will immediately see that something is off here and the viewer will look at this rounded character here. And it doesn't just work with characters. It also works greatly in landscapes, for example. Here you can see how everything is pretty rounded. These brush strokes are pretty rounded. These mountains are pretty rounded. But over here, we have a different shape, a triangular shape, very sharp corners. It's contrasting with the background. And at the same time, Ross Tran also used contrast in value here. 
This little house is very dark, very dark in value compared to the background here. There's a big contrast here, attracting the viewer's eye, just like the saturated colors here near the horizon. Guiding lines work a bit like, like road signs. They are pointing the viewer in the right direction. So all of these characters are pointing us towards our main character here, our focal point. Here's a little example to show you what I mean. This is a classic painting and your eyes will get drawn to this center area, not just because of the contrast there, but everything seems to be pointing to this area. Here, this horse is looking in this direction. This one as well, looking at this character. The man over here is looking at the character. These guys are also walking in this direction. And here, the tails of these horses are also pointing in the right direction. So it's as if everything is flowing towards this focal point. And here as well, in this artwork by Song Nan Li, you can see how these characters are pointing towards the focal area, the focal point. At first, you'll see this character in the foreground because of the contrast. It's a lot darker than the background. And then you'll see how her weapon is pointed towards this character. And here as well, the weapons and even the dragon, everything is pointed towards this area. Even her clothing is pointing upwards here towards this character. Here, another example of how you can use guiding lines. Here you can see, again, weapons pointing towards this main character here at the focal point of this painting. It's as if these are all road signs, arrows pointing towards her. So for the viewer, there can't be any confusion here. 